Behind me is an icon of Pune. And if you're a movie buff, you no doubt recognize this place. Welcome to Shaniwarwada. In the Maratha Empire, the Chhatrapati or king would appoint his Peshwa or minister. Chhatrapati Shahu, the grandson of Chhatrapati Shivaji, appointed Bajira I as his Peshwa. The origins of the Shaniwarwada comes from a legend that goes, one day Bajira was riding on his horse when to his surprise, he saw a hare chasing a hound. This made Bajira feel that the area was auspicious as the naturally timid hare was boldly chasing a hound. He decided to build a residential complex or wada for himself and his family on that spot. The materials needed for the construction of the wada were imported from the nearby areas. The stones were brought from the nearby quarries of Chinchwad. The teak were imported from the jungles of Junar and the lime were brought from the lime bells of Jajuri. The fort is partly constructed of stone and partly constructed of bricks. There are actually two versions as to why this happened. One is that the fort was supposed to be constructed out of stone, but the people of Satara, then the capital of the Maratha Empire, they actually complained to the uh, then king, Chhatrapati Shahu, that stones were meant for kings, the Chhatrapati's uh, buildings only. So almost immediately a letter was written to the Peshwas, the ministers, stating that the fort should be constructed by bricks. Another version is that after the construction had begun, it had stopped halfway and then hurriedly they used bricks to finish up the rest. The name Shaniwar Wada means Saturday Residential Complex. But why name the Wada Shaniwar? If we take a look at the historic areas of Pune, we see many localities or pits are named after the days of the week. The name of the pit corresponds to the day of the week the bazaar or market was open. Could it be that the wada was constructed on Shaniwar pit, hence it got the name Shaniwar wada? Another story behind its name is that Saturday was considered to be an auspicious day. Bajira I laid the foundation of his own residence on the 10th of January 1730, a Saturday. The opening ceremony was held on the 22nd of January 1732, also a Saturday. The initial design of the Wada had a two-story palace and three quadrangles. This is Godubai's quadrangle. Godubai was Bajirao's aunt and her house is said to have been part of the original design of the Shaniwar Wada. The Wada was expanded under the third Peshwa, Balaji Bajirao. There was another expansion under Nana Fadnavis. Shaniwar Wada was under the control of the Peshwas until 1818. Following the third Anglo-Maratha war, the British East India Company took control of the Wada. The Wada was then used by the British as a prison to house mentally ill patients and for military purposes. Despite the ample use of wood in the construction of the Wada, there was a lack of a proper firefighting system. This made the Wada prone to fires. There were fires in 1791, 1808, 1812, 1813, and finally 1828. On 27 February 1828, the fort was said to have been burned down. It had burned for seven days continuously. The heavy granite ramparts and the strong teak gateways are the original structures that have survived the fire. It was much later when the government decided to take an interest in the preservation of historical sites. Under Mumbai's governor, Sir George Lloyd, the first excavation took place at Shaniwarwada. Shaniwarwada has five gates. The main entrance is the Dili Darwaza. Another gate facing north, like the Dili Gate, is the Mastani Gate. Masani was the wife of Bajirao I, 
the same Bajirao Masani you saw in the movies, and she used this gate to exit Shaniarwada. This gate was guarded by 10 soldiers. This is a Kirki Darwaza. It always remained closed, but it was only open through this little door, which looks like a window, hence the name Kirki Darwaza, window door. This is a Ganesh Darwaza, as it was close to the Ganesh Mahal. A total of 25 soldiers were stationed here. This is the Jambul Darwaza or Narayan Darwaza facing south and it was largely used by concubines to enter and leave the palace. The Delhi Darwaza faces north towards Delhi. The doors were large enough to allow elephants with seating canopies to enter. In the rare occasion where the elephant charges at the wada, the door is equipped with sharp spikes arranged in a 9x8 grid and placed approximately at the height of the forehead of a battle elephant. Chhatrapati Shahu told Bajiram not to have the main entrance facing north as it would be disrespectful to the Mughal emperor in Delhi. It was Bajirao's son Balaji who completed this gate in 1751 after the death of Chhatrapati Shahu. As Peshwas were devout Hindus, the main entrance is an exact copy of the gate at Indraprastha located in Delhi. Indraprastha was the capital of the Pandavas whom we read about in Mahabharata. On top of the Delhi Darwaza is the Nagar Khana. The Nagar Khana or music gallery was where musical instruments were played glorifying the Peshwas. The Nagar Khana was also where the saffron flag of the Maratha Empire was placed. This is an original structure that has survived the fire. Based on the descriptions of Shaniwarwada by contemporary visitors and what's left here at the Nagar Khana, we get an idea of what Shaniwarwada might have looked like in its heyday. The visitors described doorways with exquisitely carved teak arches with ornamental teardrop teak pillars shaped like the cypress tree. The ceiling was covered with beautiful teak tracery. The floors were made of polished marble arranged in a mosaic pattern and adorned with rich Persian rugs. The walls contained paintings from the Hindu epics Mahabharata and Ramayana. There is one original painting that has survived. At the exit, we can see the faded image of the elephant-headed god, Lord Ganesha. Due to the level of destruction, it is impossible to know the original layout of the buildings within the Shaniwarwada. The good news is that the European diplomats have recorded their visits to Shaniwarwada with graphic descriptions of what they saw. These descriptions can be used to locate a few iconic structures within the residential complex. A lot of visitors have recorded that the Wada had many fountains, one of which was the Hazari Karanje. The Hazari Karanje was a lotus-shaped fountain that was constructed for the pleasure of Peshwa Savai Madhavrao. It was designed as a 16-petal lotus with about 197 tubes still visible today. Further down from the Hazari Karanje is the residence of Sadashiv Rao Bab, the nephew of Baji Rao, who was famously martyred at the Third Battle of Panipat. If you're a fan of Bollywood, you probably recognize his name as there is a movie based on him titled Panipat. Right next to his house is the residence of Madhav Rao. And here is the residence of Raghunatha Rao. This is also called the Badami Bangla. This is the residence of Raghunatha Rao, the uncle who famously ordered the killing of his nephew, Narayana Rao. The nephew's body was then taken out of that gate there is a dark story as to how this gate earned its name as Narayan Gate. Back in 1773, the ruling Peshwa, Narayan Rao, was actually killed by his guards 
by the orders of his uncle Raghunatha Rao and aunt Anandibai. The corpse was taken out of this gate for cremation. Legend has it that on a full moon night, people have heard Narayan Rao's desperate call for help, Kaka Amala Wachwa, which translates to Uncle Save Me. The seat of the Peshwa was at the Ganpati Ranga Mahal. This famous and the only contemporary painting of the Ganpati Rang Mahal shows off the grandeur of the court. Sitting down is Savai Madhav Rao. Just behind the Ganpati Mahal was a tank with eight fountains. Savai Madhav Rao is said to have fallen here to his death from the first floor of the Ganpati Mahal. There were other places where visitors were entertained these are the remains of the Divan Kana. The room was described as spacious and lofty with arches and carvings on pillars. The main source of water for Shaniwarwada was from the Katraj Lake. Throughout the Wada, there are provisions to provide water to its residents. Here is the eight-angled well that supplied water to the residences above. This is Pushkarini or the inner square that would have been the focus of the dining space. There is a tank in the middle square. Just before the inner square, we can see the remains of the office of the Chatrapati and Peshwa. In the absence of the Chatrapati, the Peshwa represented the king. The Shaniwar Wada was not just home to people. Horses and elephants were kept ready for use at all times, be it for battle or long journeys. Near the Divan Kana are the remains of the office of the stable. From the office, we can see the remains of the stables for the horses and elephants. This corridor would have been used to take horses for a stroll. In the southwest corner of the Shaniwarwada near the Narayan Gate, some sources claim that this was the living quarters of the Peshwa's servants, complete with the Tulsi Vrindavan. Vrindavan is the sacred grove on which the Tulsi plant is grown. There are also remains of what looks like the bathing area and washrooms for the residents. Travelers to the Wada describe buildings like a big bungalow, a seven-storied building with the Peshwa's residence on top and a mirror palace. These buildings are supposed to be somewhere in this quarter but are not yet excavated. The good news is that the trailer of the Archaeological Survey of India is here. Hopefully soon, the excavations will take place and the buildings will be located. In the meantime, make sure your visit to Shaniwarwada is not on a full moon night.